You should now have a good idea of how ionic bonding works. And we know that it's going to be a metal plus a non-metal is going to give you an ionic bond or, or a structure with ionic bonds inside. So what about if two non-metals react together? Well, if we have a non-metal plus another one, oh, that's better, a non-metal plus a non-metal, we are going to get something known as a covalent bond. Covalent bond. And generally, in chemical compounds, we are talking about either ionic bonds or covalent bonds. The third type, which we're going to speak about, is metallic bonding. But that is generally not in compounds. That is normally in mixtures, which are alloys, and in pure metals, so in the element form. So a chemical reaction will normally form either a covalent or an ionic bond. Okay, so what is a covalent bond? Well, remember from the previous video, that an ionic bond is where we have an electron which is donated from one atom to another, forming two ions. In a covalent bond, neither atom really wants to donate an, an electron fully. It would rather just be like, hey, I'm happy sharing, but I'm not going to give you the whole electron because then I'm missing out as well. And so a covalent bond is where we have electrons being shared. Now this can happen between two different atoms or it could be between two atoms of the same element. So for example, hydrogen. Hydrogen gas is probably gonna be the simplest example that I can give you, because hydrogen in the periodic table is the first element, so it contains one single electron. So if we have a hydrogen, looks like this. This is the full electron configuration of that hydrogen. It's only got one electron. If I add another one, now remember previously uh, we spoke about dot and cross diagrams. I'm going to do the same thing here. And I'm going to say that this hydrogen has a dot as its electron. The reason being, you will see the separate electrons when they bond together. You'll be able to see where the electrons come from. And so that will give us both hydrogens. I'll draw them a bit bigger actually. So both hydrogens, like this. And rather than just one of them taking the two electrons, that wouldn't make either of them happy. Because if, if this hydrogen donated its electrons, it's now got no electrons left. And it needs electrons because there's no inner shell inside this first shell. And so the best case here is to share both. Because the outer shell, which is the first energy level here, can contain two electrons. So if we share these electrons between the hydrogens, both of them technically have two electrons in their outer shell now. So both of them are fully happy. And this is actually what we know as a molecule. So this is a hydrogen molecule. It's a molecule of hydrogen gas. In theory, we will see hydrogen gas looking like this, buzzing around in the air. So if you have hydrogen gas, it is just two atoms joined together and they buzz around separately of other hydrogen molecules. So that's the simplest example I can really give you. Now let's have a look at something slightly, very slightly more complicated, which is an oxygen molecule. So remember, oxygen looks something like this. You've got oxygen, two electrons in the first energy level, and the second energy level, well, oxygen's in group six, so it has six electrons in its outer shell, like so. Now just like in ionic bonding, with your covalent bonding, it's fine in a dot and cross diagram to only show the outer shell electrons. So I could just rub out this inner shell, the first shell. It is there, but it's going to get annoying if, you're, if you need to draw many different atoms if you have to draw the full electron configuration. So the only electrons that we're really that interested in are the ones in the outer shell. And so that is going to be added to another oxygen with the same amount of electrons in its outer shell. And notice again, I'm drawing these ones as dots so we can separate between the two atoms. And so what we're going to get is, let's say down here, that's, that looks like a face, but, so down here, there we go, the arrow going around like that. That's not how you'd normally draw it, of course, but I don't have room on that row. We're going to have oxygen, 
let's over exaggerate this outer shell so we can see the overlap there we go we have oxygen so two separate oxygen atoms and now they're going to overlap but think how many electrons does oxygen need in its outer shell the answer there is eight each oxygen currently has six but it needs eight in its outer shell so each oxygen needs to obtain two more electrons and so therefore each oxygen atom is going to share two with its neighbor so its neighbor will be happy this first oxygen has four electrons which it's not sharing there we go it's not sharing and it's going to share two of them there we go this oxygen is going to do exactly the same thing it's going to share two of its electrons and keep four for itself one two three four and now if we count the amount of electrons we've got we have one two three four five six seven eight on the left and one two three four five six seven eight on the right and so by sharing two electrons each each oxygen is now fully happy it has eight electrons in its outer shell and therefore this is an oxygen molecule something to note here is that the fact that we have shared two pairs of electrons rather than one pair of electron makes this a double bond a double bond rather than a single bond the hydrogen has shared one electron so this is a single bond so one electron each or one pair of electrons makes a single bond two pairs of electron makes a double bond lastly I want to show you the way that we can actually draw these um, without doing a full dot and cross diagram and so this is the simple way especially in organic chemistry you'll remember from our alkenes alkanes from unit one that we drew covalent bonds in a different way and they look something like this if we had hydrogen we'd have hydrogen and we just draw a stick or a line to represent that covalent bond this line actually represents the overlap like this and so therefore this is a hydrogen molecule oxygen is covalently bound to the other oxygen but remember this is a double bond and each stick here represents a bond and so we need two sticks there to represent a double bond and that is an oxygen molecule so if you think about it if you remember we had molecules that look like like this ethane so this is an alkane each one of these sticks actually represents an overlap of electrons and so you can see why we don't write um, all covalent substances in terms of dot and cross diagrams because if we had to do that for two carbons and six hydrogens that would start to get a little messy and drawing the electrons in is going to take a long time and so this is the quick way of writing one but you'll often be asked to draw the dot and cross diagram and that is going to look like this and finally if you have these simple covalent molecules because in order to turn these covalent molecules into a gas or a liquid or a solid what we need to do is make these molecules become packed together or further apart and so therefore we are not actually having to break down our covalent bonds so in a gas for example in oxygen gas we still have this oxygen gas buzzing around we don't break down these covalent bonds because these covalent bonds are very strong if we were to break those we would end up with oxygen atoms but in oxygen gas we have oxygen molecules so all we need to do to turn oxygen into a liquid and then into a gas is to make sure that these molecules are able to buzz around freely of each other and so that is actually very simple we don't actually have to break down any strong bonds there's only sort of weak interactions between the molecules which will you'll, you'll go into that uh, later on in the course and so therefore the boiling points and the melting points of the simple covalent substances are normally very low many of them are gases the bigger ones are going to be liquids and you have to get very big covalent substances in order to make them solids and so there are exceptions to that rule of course uh, and we will look at those in the next video where i'll talk about giant covalent structures but i hope this has helped clear up exactly what covalent bonding is and how we draw it if you have any questions please do put them in the comment box below or send me an email and I'll see you in the next video.